Counties in the United States. The other day I was sourcing maps for another video about the US and I ended up finding one that split the country not into states but into counties. If you're an American maybe this is obvious to you but as an outsider I was surprised at something that I've never really looked at attentively, their sizes. Or better yet, their sizes when compared to each other. On one side of the country you have counties that are pretty small on the east coast and midwest while on the west coast and western United States you have significantly bigger counties. The thumbnail is good evidence of this. The eastern two-thirds have about 2,682 counties, while the western third only has 414. For a more detailed look, we can look at a specific example. Nevada only has 17 counties, with a size of over 286,000 square kilometers. South Carolina is 83,000 square kilometers, and it has 46 counties. That's an average county size of 1,800 square kilometers for South Carolina and an average county size of 16,800 square kilometers for Nevada. But the same analysis can be done by population and the results here are key. South Carolina has a population of 5.1 million people, an average of 110,000 per county, while Nevada has a population of 3.1 million which gives it an average of around 184,000 per county. Yes, Nevada has a both higher size and higher population average per county, but the ratio is far lower in population than it is in size. Their average county size is nine times higher than South Carolina's, but their average county population is only 1.6 times higher. This is a common occurrence. The smaller states further east have, in general, a much higher number of counties than the larger states out west. Even the states that don't have huge counties in the same way that Nevada or Arizona do, like Colorado or Montana, they're still significantly bigger than their eastern counterparts. So why? Like many of you may have guessed with our earlier comparison, the biggest reason and in short the main one is pretty simple, population. And all other reasons we'll see ahead end up being connected to it too. This 2020 population density map of the US by county shows us a key point. Coastal counties, the eastern ones especially, are more populated. Eastern states in general have more population, save some exceptions. This makes it so that the territorial organization has to be more detailed. This makes sense. If state A has a population of 10 million people, it can't all be managed together in one local structure, there have to be several ones. State B may be the same size, but if it has only 1 million people, there can be significantly less local structures, i.e. counties, to manage them. Sometimes it's confusing because we look at sizes on a map, when we should be looking at numbers. While a county may seem to be just a geographic division, it is also, and I would argue most of all, a political entity with the role of being a point of contact contact of the government to the population that lives there. One interesting example that proves this is Bullfrog County in the state of Nevada, a county that was created and then removed because it had no human inhabitants. The land organization wasn't the point, the people were. And if you compare the list of larger counties by area to the largest counties by size, you will see that there is absolutely no correlation whatsoever. The other reason for these differences is correlated with population and has to do with terrain. While the east is mostly plains, save the Appalachian Mountains, as you move west, they become slightly hilly and rugged terrain, and then fully mountainous. There's more mountains, there's deserts, forests, these territorial characteristics respectively encourage and discourage settlement. It's much easier to build infrastructure and develop a territory if the terrain is suitable. Mountains are hard to build on and across, so less people live there. If less people live there, then less government structures are needed. And climate goes hand in hand with terrain, having the same effects. Eastern states have a more continental climate in the north and humid subtropical in the south, while as you go further west, it becomes more arid, semi-arid, or highland, and until you finally reach California, with its Mediterranean climate, and Washington and Oregon with its own characteristic one. 
The West Coast also has a high population and smaller county sizes in the coastal regions, which I believe confirms our thesis. Furthermore, their coastal location enabled easier trade. Industry was established close to shipping areas, and so these states' economies grew more and more, leading to the formation of urban centers, each requiring local governance. And finally, connected partially to the other two, the date of establishment. One research stated that when the counties in the eastern states were formed, it was deemed appropriate for a farmer to be able to ride on a horseback to the county seat, conduct business there, and then be able to return home before sundown. Many of the western states have large tracts of empty, unpopulated land, and the county seat was generally where the largest concentration of residents lived. Whether this analysis is factual or not, I have no idea if it was actually deemed appropriate for the horse ride distance to be short, the dates are key. Eastern states were the first to be established, the first 13 colonies and annexed territory from the British, then Florida, the Louisiana Purchase, the Texas and California annexation, and other Mexican sessions happened after. Eastern states were the first to be populated, to develop and to grow in population and infrastructure. This caused their territorial organization to have to be more detailed. The colonization of the West came later, the regions were, and in part still are, much more sparsely populated, and despite the equal or even larger state sizes, most of the land is just nature, inhospitable in part and empty in its majority. Furthermore, there was just so much land that settlers were able to claim very large tracts of it for themselves alone. And so, while the property of one man in the eastern states could be limited to a couple hundred square kilometers, in the western ones it could go up to thousands or more. In addition, the economic landscape here was initially centered around resource extraction, such as mining and lumbering, or animal ranches. These activities often occurred in remote areas with a limited settlement. This necessarily made it so that less people lived there and that less urban centers were created, requiring less governance structures, the opposite that we saw happen with the eastern ones due to industry and trade. The slower pace of settlement of the west also necessarily allowed for larger administrative units which could later be subdivided if population density increased. In some cases it did increase, but subdivisions didn't happen. The largest county by area is an example of this, San Bernardino in California. It was established in 1853 and seven years later had a population of just 5,551 people. Today, with the meteoric growth of California, it has more than 2 million residents, making it the 12th most populous county. However, it still wasn't subdivided, which I think outlines an additional factor, governance style. One could argue that the eastern states based their governance model on the European models, while by the time that western ones were settled, European influence had mostly faded away from the US. And it was the wild west, government presence was minimal and sometimes frowned upon, this tendency may have continued on throughout history history up to the modern days, affecting the idea that government needs to be or not be thoroughly organized in those areas. To sum up, the counties of the western states in the US are larger than those of the eastern states because of the amount of people that live in them and the population density of the states they belong to. In turn, population numbers and density are affected by the time the regions were settled, starting in the east and moving west. The terrain of each area, plain in the east and mountainous in the west, the weather and climate, suitable in the east and arid in the west, and the property availability and sizes, and we also can't forget those governance differences that I just mentioned, which could perhaps be relevant too. What do you think about this? Do you agree with these criteria and reasons that I set out, or do you think there are other reasons for why western counties are so much bigger than eastern ones? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching this video, subscribe if you feel like it, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.